I don't know what you've been told. It ain't the Yakima Sweet Roll. It's the KPD's Awesome Mod. Awesome Mod. Uh, awesome Mod. Okay. Uh, awesome Mod. Uh, awesome Mod. Dip, 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 dip. Oh, okay. Ooh, ah. nice thing about this is with the bungees in place it allows an angle uh, so that you can kind of have a you know an upward angle and allows this thing to kind of tilt but it doesn't stay that way permanently so as the boat starts to kind of shift over and get a little bit flatter you don't have that issue where it's gonna like try to bind up on sections of the boat it allows it to rotate and then when this uh, the boat is actually loaded you'll see this is sitting back flat again because of the bungees and that allows it to um, that allows it to go ahead and and stay flat so that it's not bumping up against the bottom of the boat. So this makes it considerably easier, but virtually no lifting. You know, you can get the front part of the boat up here. And you can see how like effortless that was. And you can see like right here, you know, the rollers uh, have kind of hit. And then at some point it kind of flattens out. And then you're starting to work on the on the treks at that point. And, um, you know, basically, um, I mean, you know, before um, I had that load assist system on there, made it very difficult uh, because I'm, I'm having to try to lift up here, but I'm standing back here when I'm doing it. And so when I'm trying to grab it, you don't really have like your center of gravity. It's kind of out away from you. And functionally, that, that really makes the boat more awkward to work with. Um, this keeps it... Um, you know, really just like a simple matter of just kind of putting some, some gentle pressure on it and then it rolls up into place. Uh, the big thing you want to do with this is just make sure that you kind of hang on to the boat because that roller does work and it kind of wants to slide out on you, particularly if you're on a steep angle, which is, you know, happens on boat ramps and things like that. Uh, so just make sure and kind of keep a hand on the boat. Kind of walk back here until you get to the back. That allows you to just pick up a little bit of that weight just slides right on. All right, so uh, you've kind of seen the load assist system in action here. Let me tell you why I built it uh, in a little more detail. Um, when I was trying to like set this trailer up initially I wanted to balance as much of the weight in the middle of the trailer as I could so I probably put these bars a little bit farther forward than what I needed to I probably could have put them more towards the rear but um, you know when you have a light trailer and you're putting a load on it um, you know you can really start to get kind of like a walking motion from the back of your trailer when you're pulling it down the highway especially at higher speeds and what I noticed when I first got, I had a Jackson Big Tuna at the time when I first got this trailer, it really wanted to walk pretty badly. And so I figured out with the load distribution, I need to like probably get that more towards the middle of, of the trailer. So that's what I did. The downside to the way that I did that though, unfortunately, was it made it harder to, you know, move the boat in because when you put the weight up here, you're kind of trying to move the boat forward and it's like really awkward because it's away from your body. You're not really in your center of gravity or your core. You kind of have to use your arms to kind of muscle it further out. So, you know, it really got me to thinking, and, and honestly, there's a, a Yakima product, I think it's called like the Sweet Roll, that uses rollers basically in combination with a saddle. And I would have bought that product, um, but it's only rated for 75 pounds, which is not enough to handle like your bigger fishing kayaks. So, you know, if I decide to upgrade to something like a Jackson Kusa FD or a Hobie Outback in the near future, I didn't really feel like that, that Sweet Roll system that Yakima makes would be very scalable. So I decided to kind of take that idea, uh, look at what they do on full-size boat trailers, and kind of adapt that, that same basic principle. So basically what I've done here, as you can see, um, I've got uh, a three-quarter inch um, black iron pipe. Uh, it's, you know, what you use for running gas lines in homes. Uh, this is a 48-inch piece. I've just put a couple end caps on it just to make sure that it doesn't want to slide side to side. Uh, these are, I believe, um, inch and a half um u-bolts and i did have to play around with these a little bit and kind of um, stretch them out with some pliers 
uh, if you stick the round edge of a couple like channel locks together, you can kind of pry the ends of that open pretty easily uh, and widen it out so it would fit around this. So I did have to do a little home brewing there. Drilled some holes right here in the back of the, uh, the angle of the, the trailer. Uh, that allowed me to go ahead and, and bolt this thing down in place. And as you can see, there's no glue or anything else or any, just holding it, just the U-bolts and the pressure there. And this thing is, is not going to go anywhere. And it's, it's very strong. I did initially use conduit that I felt like would be a little bit easier to work with and a little bit lighter and cheaper, um, but it, it did flex too much. And so I decided to go with this. And, and I tell you what, this is like very strong stuff. Uh, I have no concerns about it being damaged or not being able to support the weight. Um, as you can see, these are a couple of marine um, trailer rollers right here. I got these, I think they're about 16 bucks a piece. Uh, I got two of them so that I could kind of load this bar and kind of keep the weight equally distributed. Um, this is 5 eighths of an inch threaded rod that I cut down. Uh, and then you can see right here on the attachment system, again, um, to attach these to the uh, black iron pipe, this is a U-bolt down here wraps around on the other side and then keeps in uh, you know keeps everything nice and tight there the big thing is though this needs to pivot and so you just kind of have to find a happy medium so that it keeps it in place enough that it can slide and move like it needs to but um, not be so uh, not be so tight or, or so loose that it's rattling and moving around um, to attach the threaded rod to the aluminum square tubing I have here this is a one inch aluminum square tubing um, I got some um, J hooks. You can kind of see those right there. And then I got coupling nuts. So I tightened the coupling nuts down in place on the threaded rod where I needed. Uh, drilled my hole here in the aluminum bar and then just tightened that down. And the way that this, this coupling nut fits up against the hook, you know, it kind of just latches itself in place. And it doesn't, I haven't had any instances where it looks like it wants to slip around at all. It's definitely tight enough to hold it. The big thing is you just want to make sure we've got the coupling nuts that you allow enough room for these things to be able to slide and roll easily. Um, so you can tell there is a little bit of play in there and that, that's fine. Um, this system I think has really made a big difference. One thing I will say, these bungees are very, very important. If I don't have the bungees in place, what happens is this thing becomes very unstable. It becomes top heavy. It wants to flip over because these rollers have a lot of weight on them so it wants to flip. The big thing about this is with the bungees in place, is it kind of acts like a spring uh, tension system so that it allows the rollers to be manipulated at an angle to allow the boat to slip on and off easily. But then once the boat is off of it, it naturally wants to return to an even tension with the bungees so it flattens itself out. Um, it also keeps it obviously in place, um, you know, laterally so that it doesn't want to move from side to side. Make sure you get the same length bungees. Make sure you're hooking them up to about the same spot. So that they don't want to, um, so that they don't want to kind of walk around on you. Um, there may be a fancier system for this that would use like some kind of like a spring attachment, like a like a spring activated hinge. I'm not I'm not smart enough for that. So what I'm doing instead is just using some bungees because you know, like bungees are just fun, man. So um, anyway, this has been a really good system. Um, I, I'm shocked at how easily it is to get a boat off, particularly uh, because I've got the sea tug loaded up on the back of the boat. This thing literally just wants to roll itself off. So definitely rolling off of a trailer is super easy. But as you can see earlier when we demonstrated, you can also roll on super easily. And uh, man, it makes a big difference. The biggest thing that allows me to do is it allows me to position the boat here. And then using my, my hand straps that I've got in the back, then I can just like manipulate the boat standing right here without having to reach over uh, or having to lean kind of beyond my core or my center of gravity. So it made a big difference in handling this boat. And honestly, the Kilroy is, is a pretty light fishing boat as far as rotomolded fishing boats go. Um, you know, it's really not that bad to manage. But when I build something like this, I'm thinking about the next boat I'm going to get. Uh, and it's almost certainly going to be heavier, wider, um, and just more difficult to move around. So I'm hoping that this is kind of future proof for me so that whatever boat that I have in the future, um, it's going to help me load and unload that boat a lot easier uh, than without it. All right, well, um, 
like, subscribe. If you have questions about this setup, let me know. Um, if you can think of improvements in terms of how I built this, let me know that as well. Um, I think I had about mm, maybe 60 bucks in parts in. Uh, the most expensive part, obviously, were the rollers uh, here. Like I said, they're about 15, 16 bucks a piece. And then I think the 48 inch pipe is around 10 or 12 dollars. The aluminum tubing, um, you know, there might be a better solution for that. I, I like the aluminum just because it's, you know, weather resistant and um, I don't know. It, it's, I, I I, I didn't want to try to mount something like a two by four on there. I felt like the wood would just kind of be a little bit too grippy against, um, you know, against this, this iron pipe. So uh, I felt like the aluminum would work a little bit easier. Uh, let me know what you think and uh, try it out yourself. Uh, we'll see if we can, um, you know, maybe put a dent in some of these companies' businesses uh, that I think sell overpriced kayak accessories. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Just go buy the Acoma stuff. It's cool, too. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.